Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for episode number 23 of our FIFA 15 West Ham United career mode and today we're just pretty much summing up the season. I suppose last time out of course we had the finale of the season which went down so well, incredibly well. Thank you so much for the support on that video, over 50 likes on that video and you know I spent about 12 hours on that and it just went so well. Thank you all for the support on that. I'll be announcing the goal of the season winner next episode, not in this one, but in today's episode, we're going to be just sort of summing up the season, moving on into season two, seeing some of the stats from season one, but also starting to make some transfers. Of course, we've got two pre-contract agreements coming in, which I'll talk about in a little bit. In the background, you can see the news and the team of the competition, which doesn't have any West Ham players in, which is a bit annoying. Now you can see the table if you just want to refresh yourself with that, although it says 37 games, that's wrong. That's wrong. You'll have seen... Forget about that. You'll have seen the table in the last episode. All that you need to know is that Chelsea won the league from City, United, Liverpool in fourth. And we, of course, took fifth in the Barclays Premier League, which means we will be getting some money. You'll see that in a second. It's been a fantastic season. Coming to the final of the FA Cup, unfortunately losing the final of the FA Cup, but making it there nonetheless. And fifth in the Barclays Premier League. Here you can see the tournament prize money, the reward for such a fantastic season. We have got 13.9 million as an additional transfer budget from West Ham United. And this... This is huge. This is really huge. That is a lot of money now to spend in the next transfer window. And of course, along with that, we'll have money that we've already got and anything that West Ham, you know, the chairman and the owners decide to put on top of that. As you can see in the background now are the top scorers. There you can see Downing second on the list as a winger there on 18. Fantastic. Other West Ham player in this chart is 13th place man Maro Zarate there with 12. And we'll move on to the assists in a moment as well. There you can see the assists. Willian coming out on top there on 10 for Chelsea in front of Edinson. Cavani, Diego Costa, Rooney and Stephen Pienaar of Everton. There's quite a few West Ham players in this chart, two in the top 15, Ravel Morrison there in 8th on 7 and Ene Valencia there in 15th on 6. Also Alex Song, uh, Maro Zarate and Cheku Koyate as well there on 5. They're all in this chart and it's been a very good season for a lot of our players actually. You'll see some of the team stats in a little bit too. Here you can see the clean sheets as well. Uh, quite a long way down there, Simone Scuffe, but obviously he only joined in January. So he's only five off Mignolet, and he missed four months of the season compar in comparison to Mignolet. So that is an absolutely fantastic effort from our Italian goalkeeper, who I have to say has been pretty solid since he came in. He's had moments where he's been a little bit dodgy from time to time, but overall, in terms of those stats, he's very solid. As you can see, here we're looking at the team stats. Uh, you can see the highest appearance makers there being Alex Song on 36, from Winston Reed and Ravel Morrison, interestingly, there on 34, then Zarate and Downing and Willems on 33, from Umtiti, Koyate, Jarvis, Uchida, Valencia and Mark Noble. And in terms of the average rating, Stuart Downing comes out on top with a 7.2, from James Tompkins, who played considerably less games there on four, Ben Zarati on seven, from Ener Valencia, Simone Scuffe, Fares Bahluli, interestingly, Diafra Sacco, Mbayan Yang, Song and Matt Jarvis. So now we're going to move on to the contracts because obviously we've got a few contracts expiring before the end of the season. Now the first one is Winston Reid and the only other person of massive interest in terms of getting into the starting eleven is Ravel Morrison. The rest are youngsters, Daniel Potts, Paul McCallum, Blair Turgit. We renewed their contracts without any, without much effort. Same for Yusuf Yaskalainen. But here you can see Ravel Morrison. It was all plain sailing. Winston Reid accepted. But Ravel Morrison here actually refusing to sign the new contract because he's unclear as to where he wants to go. Now I know with FIFA usually it makes no sense whatsoever. So I decided to go ahead and make him a new offer but with just five grand more instead of 40 grand going for 45 I do believe the offer was with a four year length and in the end he went and accepted that about three days later so a small hiccup there in terms of contracts with Ravel Morrison but in the end we did manage to get that signed so no qualms no issues with Winston Reid and Ravel Morrison they'll be signing for next season but now in the background you're going to see uh, some of the players that you guys actually recommended to me uh, at the end of episode number 21. You guys went massively ham with this, so there's a lot of recommendations here. Uh, I don't mind if you want to pause as well, because there's quite a few. I don't want to bombard you with that. Uh, but just over the top, whilst you're looking at that in the background, I'm going to tell you about my plans for the transfer window. Uh, obviously, we're in the Europa League next season. That comes with the territory of finishing fifth. So we're going to need a lot more squad depth because at the moment we've got a starting 11, a bench, and that is literally it. So we're going to go for some depth in terms of central midfield. We've already got uh, Fabian Delft and Andre Ayew coming in as pre-contract agreements. They're pretty much going to replace Song and Dumbaye Niang, who of course go back from their loans, as does Carl Jenkins and as does Fares Bahluli and as does Briel Donald Mbolo. Because FIFA is 
slightly flawed and unfortunately despite putting a um, an offer to actually make the deal permanent because you don't get to see the emails when this happens that's going on in the background I didn't get the option to do that so Bahaluli and Mbolo go back from their loans without me actually being able to sign them permanently which I'm a bit disappointed about but yeah, we're going to be going for some depth. We're going to try and sign an attacking midfielder, like a big star attacking midfielder. Some depth in terms of central midfield and at the back as well. Perhaps a striker if I have enough money. A lot of the recommendations were strikers. As you can see in the background there is the budget. 22 million and 110 grand as a wage budget. So a pretty big transfer budget, especially seen as we have already got two signings for free before this even happened. And that is, of course, Andre Ayew and Fabian Delphi will slot straight into the starting uh, lineup. Two very good players there, Andre Ayew who is 80 stat and Delph who is 76 and uh, now before we obviously buy some more players we've got to set up who we're going to sell first Madibo Maiga who comes back from his loan he'll be straight out the door James Tompkins is up for sale because he wanted to leave although I'm not actually wanting to sell him yet and Mark Noble similarly as well because he wanted to leave and uh, making a few inquiries there we've been priced out there for Angel Correa and Yuri Tielemont it would appear although Alan Traore and Tony Vilhena are looking a lot more reasonable another person we looked at is Guido Fafana because when we look at depth Fafana can play as a centre mid, a defensive mid, a right back and a centre back. So you can pretty much plug any hole you want. Leon wanted 14 million. I thought that was a little bit expensive to say he's 24 years of age. His wages are quite hefty as well. So we're going to go ahead and put in a very small 5 million pound bid. See what goes down. May make a cash plus player deal a little bit later on. But Alan Traore here is another player we've looked at as well. Amazing long shots on this guy, which was something that immediately appealed to me. Going to make a 2.5 million bid for him because Lorian only offered or only wanted 4.3 on their inquiry they come back and say they've put a three and a half price tag on him and also we are rejected by Leon because apparently he is a little bit too valuable to the team which I can completely understand he's a very good player so we're going to go back and make another bid for Alan Traore more of a depth signing nothing spectacular only about 73 stat but amazing long shots so it should be interesting to see whether we can score some amazing goals with him making a few inquiries there again for Sylvan Vidma Kevin Vimmer Jonas Hoffman and Rodrigo some more of your suggestions Vidma and Vimmer look very good in terms of depth as well although I'm not going to want to try and spend all my money on depth players I do want to make the squad a lot better with a few signings there for maybe a striker and attacking mid as you can see Lorient actually accepted that bid there for Alan Traore of 3 million so we'll go ahead and make that deal we'll sort that deal out a little bit later on once he's been scouted and as you can see we're actually offering 14 million pounds here for PSV's Jorginho Vijnaldum who looks like a very good attacking midfielder I do believe he's 78 stat quite young as well he'll be a massive flair player a huge signing if we can pull that off Alan Traore there just offering a contract offer and uh, yeah so it's going well so far, making bids for Alan Traore, Guido Fafana. Fafana was rejected, Traore looks as if he's all but signed. And Vijnaldum, we're just going to have to do a little bit of negotiating with PSV because he looks absolutely awesome. Although he wasn't a suggestion from you guys, he does look very good. PSV actually rejected that offer, said they wanted, I think it was about 20 and a half million. So we go back ahead, we're going to haggle a little bit more and go for 17 and a half million pounds. For a player who's got about 83 potential, that is going to be quite big. Uh, that's going to be a massive addition to the team. As you can see, Alan Traore will be signing for us. We're just going to accept that offer for him. Uh, because he accepted the contract offer. There you can see nothing spectacular, 73 stat and 27 years of age, but 86 shot power, 86 long shots. Uh, as, a, as a depth player who can also play as a striker or an attacking mid, let's not forget, that could be huge in terms of Europa League games or Cup games and the odd Premier League game too. So we've signed Alan Traore, that's the first money, monetary signing we've made in the summer transfer window to go along with Andre Ayo and Fabian Delft. But look at this, that offer from PSV was actually accepted, or offer to PSV was accepted for Vijnaldum. We're going to go ahead and make the contract offer and that is duly accepted as well. So we're making two massive signings already in this episode, in this first episode. Don't worry, I will go ahead for some of your suggestions as well. I'm going to try and sign a striker that you guys suggested. Ahmed Musa was widely suggested by quite a lot of you. And also Vimmer and Eric Palmer Brown we're going to look at in terms of depth as well at the back. That's beyond the point. We'll get into that next episode because I don't think we're going to have time this time. But Jorginho Vijnaldum, a very, very good player. MGH has used him massively in his career modes. And this guy is absolutely awesome. 17.5 million. It's a lot of money, but it's certainly going to be worth it. When we sell 
sell a few more players, we'll get a lot more money back. We can also try and offer the board, see if they can give us a little bit more money. So that's four signings now. Just to round it off, we're going to finish off with a friendly. We're going to sim this against Palermo because I'm not too bothered about things. Uh, as you can see, there's the squad in the background. Reese Burke coming in. Delph also making his full debut, as well as Andre Ayu and Jorginho Vijnaldum. But just to sum up, as this game goes on in the background, we have made four signings then already. Two signings on pre-contract agreements being Fabian Delph and Andre Ayu, and then signing Alan Traore for three million. So a bit of a bargain, really, for a depth player. 27 years of age, so he's going to be around for about three more years at least. And also the 17 and a half million pound signing of Jorginho Vijnaldum, which should be absolutely huge too. As well as getting the transfer budget back, just doing a few things, just sorting out some more inquiries as well, making a few little offers for people here and there. We'll look into Guido Fofana next time. We're we'll looking in a look into a few centre backs as well, and perhaps a striker next episode too. There you can see in the background we've actually beaten Palermo 2-1 in that friendly, thanks to goals from Andre Ayu, interestingly enough, and Diafra Sacco there. So it's pretty, it's, it's, you know, it's looking pretty good at the moment. I think it's been a pretty good episode. We made two signings. We played that friendly. I hope you guys are happy with those signings. I know one of them was massive and sort of without your guys' permission, but I know he is an absolutely huge player. Absolutely awesome. I will try and sign Ahmed Musa as well as a striker because he was uh, sort of recommended by so many of you. I'll try and get the, the funds available. Try and get the money together. If not, I'll try and sign Diabala or a few other strikers that you guys suggested. In the meantime, I hope you did enjoy this episode of career mode slightly more relaxed and laid back in terms of just making some signings feel free to like if you did enjoy and comment about enjoying it if you enjoyed the video that much as well as some recommendations for other players to sign if you wish but in the meantime it has been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a good day enjoy yourselves and goodbye